So we're going to talk about crisis communications, and um, I have a question for you. How many of you have any role or responsibility with managing people or issues in your businesses? Okay, and how about at home? <laughs> right? <laughs> Even yourselves. Do we all manage ourselves? Right. So. <laughs> A lot of this, a lot of what we're going to talk to applies to management, however, it also applies to common sense and thinking about big picture, how to put strategies in place when dealing with a crisis. So um, with that in mind, you heard a little bit about me. So really, this is a test as to your preparedness. One of the things I like to talk about is the difference between responding and reacting. Does anyone want to tell me the difference as you might see it? What is a response versus what is a reaction? Yes. Well, we'll start here and go ahead. Brian? A response okay, is Robert. planned. Right, a response is planned. A reaction is not, right? React. <laughs> right? What do we do at home? We react home, right? We, we, and when we respond, oftentimes we're thinking about what we're going to say. Um, how many of you draft an email and reread it before you send it? Please, everybody better raise their hands. If you're in a leadership program. <laughs> so leaders reread before they send, right? We proofread. We double check. We make sure we have the person's name right. I can tell you so many crises start with the smallest of things. So in leadership, we want to always be thinking about responding and avoiding reaction. I actually am a hot-tempered South Philly Italian. Does anybody know what that means? Oh, yeah. Yes, right. <laughs> it means I tend to want to react. Okay, I was brought up in a household where we react first, think later. So for me, as a leader, as a business owner, I have to stop and censor myself all the time. My son's actually over here laughing because he knows that I don't always do it perfectly well at home, <laughs> right? Because we're humans. But to stop and censor ourselves is very important because we need to say, okay, how am I going to handle this situation? And everything is a situation. It could be as simple as a thank you. How do I want to say thank you? But the way you say something will always elicit something else, either someone else's response or reaction. So here we have a crisis management plan. And while you may not ever have to put a crisis management plan in place, you may become part of a crisis management team. So I want you to think about this from every role, from every position that you're in now in your company or a position you might grow into. Because frankly, as a part of a crisis response team, they are some of the most important positions in any organization. This holds true for for-profits and nonprofits alike. If you remember a few years ago, Planned Parenthood went through a major crisis uh, when, <laughs> well, I mean, I do a whole program about that. It's actually a three-hour program about how that led to uh, a $10 million loss. And really think about that because the CEO made a decision that affected, that, that affected public policy that affected public presence and so on and so forth. So think about how you can be a part of a team. We're going to talk about crisis scenarios and what the needs are. We're going to talk about how to develop those checklists, a media and social media policy, implementation training. Um, and so these are the steps you would go through if you were on a crisis response team or in the planning process. So, and what you'll find is at the end of the presentation, I'm going to show you what a good response looks like. The beginning of the presentation, however, is very text heavy because I wanted you to have something to take back with you. I wanted you actually to have the steps so you say, this is what I need. Um, so rather than me just talking and showing you pictures, which I often like to do, I really wanted to give you the tools you needed to be successful. So, who are some of the people that go into a crisis response team? Anyone have uh, some thoughts on, on that? Who you might want on a crisis response team? Somebody who's a really good public speaker. <laughs> Let's start there. Go ahead. PR, social media um, representation. Somebody who knows how to manage PR and social media, absolutely. A spokesperson. Safety and security. IT. So think about all of your company's assets. 
No matter if you're in a bank or if you're in a nonprofit, the company has assets. The assets start with everything from the physical building and the safety of the people on down to the technology, right? Every piece is an asset. Your crisis response team should have people in place that are responsible for those assets. So if it's someone who knows how to get into your IT or, or manage your website, website's a big piece of that. Manage your social media, uh, your CEO, of course, uh, head of security if you have one, and if you don't, someone from the police department who's familiar with your organization. Oftentimes that's the case. In a crisis response plan for the county court, they will have um, local law enforcement involved. As should banks, they should be familiar with their local police officers or the branches in the event that there is an issue. So think about what does that team look like? There's a manager, a spokesperson. By the way, I'm a recovering lawyer, so don't say anything bad about yeah. lawyers. <laughs> but you always want your corporate counsel on your crisis response team. There is always a reason one of the reasons why lawyers like working with us is because we understand the legality of the issues. So if a client is in a crisis, we know how to uh, work with the attorneys to make sure that we've covered all our bases. And just determine a crisis respond post, a, a command post. So for example, we did a big crisis response plan for a lower Bucks County mall. You can guess which one it is. It's only one very big mall down there. And it was, we did a bomb drill, a mock bomb drill. And we had the police and the fire involved. And we had to pick a location. And in the plan, everyone had to be able to meet at that location. If we have a bomb threat, where do we meet? What do we do? What is needed in that command post? Now, some businesses need these, some businesses don't. Um, if your building is on fire, where are you going to conduct your operations? Does your crisis response plan address off-site backups of your computer data? If any of you are not backing up off-site in your businesses, and if you're not sure, ask IT, you should be. Because these are real things. So planning for the worst. What scenarios can cause a crisis? I've already mentioned fire. You want to give me some others? Natural disaster. Natural disaster. We've seen that quite a bit lately, right? What else? IT security breach. IT security breach. Big one. We just stopped hosting websites at my company. <laughs> I don't want the liability. What else? Workplace violence. Workplace violence, absolutely. Terrorist attack. Terrorist attack, big one. Active shooter. Death of a senior executive, natural disaster. natural disaster, senior person on team embezzling from the company. I've seen that. Employee. Bankruptcy, employee theft. employee theft. So any of these types of things can create a scenario that you want to manage and you want to know how to manage it. Who do you want and need to influence? Who are the audiences that matter in a crisis? First and foremost, employees. your employees, absolutely. Second, customers. your customers. Third, the media, the media yes. Fourth, vendors. vendors, partners, funders, donors. Everybody is your audience. Community, anyone in your community of influence. What do you want to communicate to them? So now you're not going to answer this because it depends on every scenario, but these are the things we put in a plan. What needs to be communicated? We're okay, we've got it under control, we will survive. Maybe, maybe not, maybe they're not the right. I, so it depends on the scenario, but these are the things that you're going to be looking at. They're your key messages. Then we talk about what are the tactics. How do you get these messages across? I know you already mentioned social media, public relations. There are two ways. There are tons of ways to get your message across. I'm going to talk about them throughout. And how quickly must you respond? Anybody want to tell me how quickly you think you need to respond from the corporate level in a crisis? As soon as safely possible. As soon as safely possible. Thank you. That is the perfect answer. And that is the truth. Not once we've heard from our lawyers. 
Okay, and I really mean that. You need to have discussed these things with your council well in advance of a crisis. Because the media is 24-7, 365 immediate. My company, we worked on a case, um, I don't know if you, any of you saw the national news last night, but we handled the media relations in the Esmond family case where the four family members went down um, to the Caribbean and were poisoned by pesticides. And there was a, a big story came out yesterday about the, um, well, it's not, it's public, about Terminex and being held liable for that. Um, one of the worst stories I've ever had to work on in my life. I had Good Morning America, the Today Show, CNN, all calling us yesterday. I had no idea the court decision came down. So my response was, I'll get back to you in a moment <laughs> pick up the phone. What is your deadline? Because I had to call the client and say, what's going on? Now, in this case, we have no authority to comment, nor did our client, so there was nothing to be said from our side. But these are the types of things where the minute that case was decided, the media was on it, the minute, the second, and we were getting phone calls. So it's, these are things to think about in terms of timing. So we talked a little bit about what crises can cause a scenario. I've listed a bunch here for you, for you to think about. So with each of these, when you go through planning, you have to think about what is the actual issue? Okay, that's a really important thing to define. What is the actual issue? Not the perceived issue, but the actual issue. How might it play out? This is the scenario planning. And you know, by the way, we do this, we've done this in our own home. We have a designated safe place if there is a fire on the property. I might test my son soon and see if he remembers. Gazebo. <laughs> <laughs> I haven't done it in a while. Um, but these types of things to go through and make sure that you know what, it, what is the plan. What do you need to get across? The if-then scenario. If this, then that. Um, that's one of my favorite things to go through is the if-then scenario. I do it all the time. I even do it with my staff when we're just talking about, well, if the media asks X, then how should we respond? And just, you know, that, that practice. What are the legal issues and considerations? What can you say? What can't you say? Always important. There are always things you can't say. And I can promise you at any given day of my business life, there is a client in crisis. And I need to know what can we and can we not say? What can we, your PR agency, know and what can't we know? That's why I like to have a lawyer involved because they'll say, oh, that's privileged, don't tell them. Okay, don't tell me, I don't want to be subpoenaed. How can your message be manipulated? Because people do manipulate messages, right? We've seen that too. And when is the right time to act? So these, again, I'm going back, you'll start to see some themes here. And again, all of this is in your materials. That way you weren't reading, you would have them in front of you. So in tactics, you need to determine what needs to be handled internally. Do your lawyers need to be involved? What needs to be handled externally? We've talked about the external audiences. What tools should be used? So some of these tools, depending on the scenario, we would like to write them out in our plan. What could a public statement look like? We call them holding statements. And I'll show you some examples of them in a, in a little bit. Uh, are they going, could, it, could this blow up on TV, radio? I mean, it can blow up anywhere. Uh, a, a simple social media post or a simple Twitter post by our president and you know, on any given day ends up on every major news station, right? We all laugh, but it's the truth. I mean, Twitter is your enemy. Um, <laughs> press conferences, do you need that? You know, what, what do you need? Letters to target audiences. I'm big on having draft letters that can be edited and sent quickly, typically via social media. Uh, for example, when Hurricane Sandy hit, we had a lot of clients who were affected. Our business, we have clients all over the United States. We had emails ready to go, knowing that some of our clients, for our clients, may be shut down, letting them know all of our employees are safe. Our office will be closed for the next week. We will be conducting business. Here's an 800 number where we can all be reached. It will be, you know, all of those things because we knew this storm was coming, right? I mean, everyone on the East Coast, we all knew it was coming. So we were ready for it. 
um, who's monitoring? So not only who can handle your social media, but who's monitoring it. That's really important. And sometimes, very rarely, I will say that you should remain silent. Very rarely. So here's an example. You may all remember last year there was a, um, a, a fight at one of the hockey games. It was uh, Central Bucks West and Ridley Township. And they were going into the playoffs. And the allegations, and I say that because I think the matter is still in court, were that the Ridley players planned to beat up, to attack these CB West players. I don't know if that's true or not true, caveat, but that's what it appeared to be. And that's how it was covered. So this, I mean, this was awful. And by the way, my daughter is in the class of the kids who ended up in the hospital. So this was really disturbing for us. We knew some of these uh, young men. So while it was disturbing, I really found the Ridley's response from the hockey club president to be an excellent response. Because I'm gonna read just the beginning. The Ridley Hockey Program views the actions of some of our players in the hockey game against Central Bucks West last night as indefensible. We are disgusted and appalled with the decisions of our players and in no way condone their actions. What did they do? Say it really loud. They took responsibility. Do you want to know how quickly the media died down on this story? Like that. If they did not take responsibility, I promise you this story would have been in the news headlines day in and day out and day in and day out. Do I condone the behavior of what happened? Absolutely not. Would I have liked to see, have seen it stay in the media spotlight for a little while to really make sure this kind of behavior doesn't continue? Yes, but if I were counseling Ridley, this is what I would have told him to say. So it's a really good example of this response was rather immediate. I do not know if they had legal counsel involved. Part of me tends to think they don't in this case because it says indefensible, and I don't know any lawyer who will let anybody <laughs> say that. <laughs> Having gone to law school, I can promise you there's no lawyer that's gonna let you say that. However, it's an excellent statement, and it really was very heartfelt. So this is the type of thing where having certain statements prepared and knowing that you're not always going to be prepared, and this could just be in life. Yes, sir, Robert. So the question, my question would be, if you make a statement like this, and before all the facts are discovered, since it came out so quickly, does this put, could this put, this person in an uncomfortable situation where they're now not only trying to defend, you know, maybe false allegations, but a statement of admission? Any statement without enough evidence to back it up could put somebody in a very awkward position, yes. However, I do believe in this case, and, and if you, I, I was watching the news coverage and listening to a lot of the interviews, and there were parents and kids saying, you know, we heard them planning it, an attack in advance, and um, I think they knew in this case. I think they were very clear of what was happening and what happened. Um, and I'll tell you, I mean, this died down instantly. Now, yes, if you don't have enough information, and I'm going to show you a couple examples of where, if you don't have enough information, what you could say in those cases, because you can't always say something like this. Um, however, I felt that it was a very good example of a very heartfelt, very real, very authentic, transparent response. Notice to the words I used. Authentic, heartfelt, transparent. These are some of the things. How many of you like a spokesperson who stands there and reads the script? On behalf of the association, you know, it's you know it's, it's so scripted. This was really heartfelt, it was a very clear message. And it, like I said, everything died down, it just stopped. So is it ever better to remain silent? I love this quote. As we must account for every idle word, so must we account for every idle silence. How many times did you say, you didn't answer me? Right? I probably say it to my kids all the time. 
So alternatives to no comment. If you take anything away with you, this is a really, these are really important messages to have in your arsenal, no matter what. Let's say perhaps you sit on a board. This, perhaps this will never come up for you in your current business, but you sit on a board where it might. These are the types of statements that you want to know how to use. We are aware of the situation and are working to gather the facts. We will share verified, keyword, information publicly when we are able, to your point. But it answers them. It answers, so if it's a media question or people are calling on the phone and asking questions, let's say it's a data breach at a bank. Let's say that there's a skimming issue. People are hearing about it, they're calling. You need to have a statement for, customer, for your customer service reps. They need to be able to say something. We're aware of an issue. These are the steps we're taking right now. Give me your information. We will contact you within two hours, whatever the case may be. So I know we have a lot of banks represented, that's why I use that example. But these are real things that happen every day. We appreciate your feedback. Hearing from our customers is important to us. We are investigating the matter and will respond when we have more information. I didn't say anything different than the first one, by the way. Yes, my lawyer is showing through. But these are things, people want to have you respond. Whenever you see somebody uh, on television and the news, they put the mic mics in their face and they go, I don't have a comment, I don't have a comment. <laughs> What's the first thing you feel about that person? That guy's guilty. That guy's guilty? Totally shady. Shady, right? What's he ashamed of? What are they ashamed of? Now, perhaps the person didn't do anything wrong, right? All they have to do is say something. Because it's really about how you come off, not what you say, most of the time. This matter is being handled by our legal counsel, and as a result, we are unable to provide more details at this time. Please provide us with your contact information and we will follow up as soon as we are able. Again, as soon as we are able. You've made no promises, really, because you may never be able to follow up. But you've said something that's respected the fact that they've reached out to you. And we've had to use these types of things over and over again for clients. I hear that such and such and so and so and blah, 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 and we have it on good authority. I'm like, I understand you have it on good authority. However, <laughs> <laughs> so, you know, and these are some of the things where you may never have to use them, but if you do, keep this uh, close by because there's not a lot of things you can say sometimes, but having something is better than nothing. I love every, everything we do in my office. I love to go back and say, okay, what did we learn from this? What did we learn from this? Some of the one of the most important questions you can ask. So when we did the um, bomb training at the mall, the most important part of that was for all of us to meet and do the postmortem. We sat down and said, "What did we learn? We learned that that hallway is not safe. We learned that this is not the best point for a command post. That is. We learned that." In order for us to evacuate the building, we might have to open up more of the um, exterior exits. You know, whatever the case may be, I don't, I actually, that was a long time ago, I don't recall exactly if they were the things that we learned. But I can tell you there is always something to be learned. We learned that this member of the media was going to blow it out of proportion no matter what we do. Right? Sometimes that's the case. Or we learned that this member of the media is really, really dead on accurate, so we should always call them first. I have, there's people that I always call first, I can tell you, because I know that they're always going to have integrity in their reporting, and they're going to take the time to fact check before they're going to worry about whether or not they're the first to the story. That's very important to me. So these are some of the things. Then you update your crisis response plan. Your, your, so you want to go through that process. Sometimes you might say, you know what? That person just, they'd be really good at X, but maybe they're not the right person for this role on the crisis response team. Nothing wrong with that. Put them in a different role. Update your contact list. I have found in doing this that we didn't have the right cell phone numbers for people. 
It was mistyped in the plan. Not a good thing if you need to reach somebody at 2 o'clock in the morning. Or, better yet, did you tell them they're on the crisis response team? <laughs> By the way, if you put somebody on it, they need to know it. It's kind of like designating somebody as the trustee on a will. Oh, I had no idea. I don't want to be the trustee. You know, I mean, you, so it's, it's communication, very important. And train the team. Go through scenario planning. Have the conversation like you're having today. Think about the issues. How does this affect us? And for those of you who may never have the opportunity to write a plan, now you might have the opportunity to be a part of that team, to go back and be a thought leader in your organization and say, you know, do we have a crisis plan? How many of you know if your companies have crisis plans? I know one of your companies does. Okay, so I know Sesame Place does. I know Penn Community Bank does. Penswood Village, I would hope so. Right? So think about that and think about what do you need in place to make sure that you are prepared? So, and it could be anything. I mean, it really, I had a client where the executive director was very well known, sat on a lot of boards, not in this county, um, was embezzling money, a lot of money. Knew everyone. The board had to remove that person quietly and carefully while making sure they followed all employment law rules. I mean, it was a process. So we were contacted on a Friday. The person was removed at 6 a.m. Monday morning. We worked round the clock to make sure everything was in place. Why? Because they didn't have a crisis response plan. So here's another uh, effective use of integrated crisis management. Um, you may remember last year we all had a shelter in place after a prisoner escape here in Central Bucks. Did anybody hear about that story? Kids got sent home. It was insane, right? I have to say I am so proud of the communities that we live in in Bucks County, from Lower Bucks to Upper Bucks. And the effort that was made to communicate. Now, many, many people, there will always be criticizers. Oh, they're blowing it out of proportion. Oh, they don't know if he's got to go. There will always be people who criticize. However, as a member of this community who has two children in our schools, if there is an escaped prisoner, I want to know my children are safe. Period. End of story. And the way the county and the police department and the school district worked together, because they have a crisis plan, to communicate to the community and the media was perfect in my opinion. It was a perfect example of making sure that they were over communicating because you know if you under communicate you will be criticized even further. And there were many people who said they said too much, they did too much, they shouldn't have done this, they shouldn't have done that. But I thought this was a fabulous example. So in your materials you'll see it, uh, it shows Doylestown Township and Central Buck School District. It shows the borough of Doylestown getting involved with the same communications. They're all in concert with one another, which I think is most important. How they're communicating text messages. I mean, not, there was not one form of communication. They were all forms of communication. The school sending letters home. It went on and on and on. But what did they do? They communicated effectively in a crisis, solved the problem, Case over. What was the worst thing that happened? A couple roadblocks. A couple roadblocks and our kids missed a day of school. So what? Right? In the end of the day, I slept better knowing that our community took the time to work together to keep our people safe. I'm pretty sure we only have about a minute or two left, so I want to make sure I left some time for questions. Yes? In the court of law, how important is the court of public opinion? <laughs> Great question. In the court of law, how important is the law of public opinion? The court. The court of public opinion. Well, depends. So if it's a jury trial, it is extremely important because the jury will be tainted no matter what you try to do. If it <laughs> We have social media today. I would not want to litigate in court today high-profile matters. 
and I have been very involved in high profile cases. I can tell you that the court of public opinion has a major effect. When it comes to a bench trial, I think much less so because judges really pride themselves, most of them, really work very hard just to look at the facts, the evidence, and the rule of law. So, um, but it, you know, a jury is everything. You know, I mean, how many cases have been removed to other parts of the state because they don't feel that they can get a fair jury? Um, and you can, for, you can sequester your jury all you want, but I really do believe that they're still going to get the information they want to get. It's just impossible not to today with social media and internet access. Other questions? That was a great question, by the way. I actually have a program just on that. <laughs> Any other questions? Well, you can reach me. I have my card here. It's my honor and privilege to serve you today.